What's going on YouTube? So beside me is the all new 2023 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. And it's been a long time in the making waiting for this all new Sequoia to come out. As a matter of fact, the previous generation first came out when I was in kindergarten. So yes, it's been a long time of the previous gen and this all new one is packing a lot of tech, a lot of luxury, and I'm so excited to show it to you guys. Today, it's gonna to be part two of our review of this all new Sequoia where we do driving impressions and talk about the pricing information. So let's go ahead and get into that. I won't keep you waiting any longer. All right guys, so as usual, we will start out with a quick recap of the exterior and interior, then we'll get into that test drive and pricing components. Um, but as you can see, this all new Toyota Sequoia is a very good looking product. Now, of course, it's based on the all new Toyota Tundra that just came out last year, and you're gonna see a lot of design uh, resembl resemblances, um, but it does have its own unique style and a few different unique elements going on here. So around the outside edges, that's gonna see where you're gonna see most of the differences. Um, it's not gonna have a chrome piece. It's gonna be a body color all the way around. And you also have a little bit of a less squared off element right here. Additionally, for your grill design for the capstone, you're gonna have this full blinged out chrome finish. And it's also gonna have a blue Toyota emblem because we do have a hybrid powertrain. More on that in just a second. Now, as far as the headlights are concerned, we do have the premium version of the headlights. Um, these are included if you go for a platinum or capstone edition. That's gonna include adaptive abilities as well as just the more premium design with the dynamic turn signal. Although all Sequoias will have LED lighting, we're also gonna have LED fog lights at the bottom too. Now let's go ahead and talk about your wheels. There are a ton of different wheel designs that you can get on the Sequoia. These are gonna be 22 inch contrast alloys for the capstone absolutely love the look of these they really set off the overall finish of this model if we move on up we have our iForce max uh, badge as i mentioned earlier our mirrors are going to be chrome capped for the capstone as you would expect nice resemblance there we also have blind spot monitoring and fully loaded functionality including power folding auto dimming and heating now let's talk about the side of the Sequoia. It's not available in a long wheelbase form. So what you see is what you get. You're gonna have 208 inches in length for this all new Sequoia model, which is up three inches over the previous generation. Still a few inches shorter than something like a Chevy Tahoe though for reference. And as far as the rear design is concerned for this all new one, uh, you're gonna have a really cool design. It's very squared off boxed and max masculine looking, um, but you're gonna have a lot of premium new elements going on. So we have this chrome piece in the middle. Here are your taillights. Once again, the taillights are gonna mirror what you see in the headlights as these are the premium version since we have at least the platinum trim level. As you can see, it has the dynamic turn signal, some LED componentry, Sequoia spelled out across the back. No exposed exhaust unless you go for a TRD Pro and your max towing on any Sequoia is gonna be 9,520 pounds. Now let's talk about your safety systems. Toyota is throwing in every single one of them as standard equipment on every single Sequoia. So that's something that you really don't get in a lot of its competition like the Chevy Tahoe. Um, so it's gonna be Ford emergency braking and pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, auto high beams, and adaptive cruise control. And that's gonna be standard on all of the models. So even the more basic SR5. But guys, I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's go ahead and hop on the inside, talk briefly about that before we take it out in a spin. As I climb up into the cabin on the uh, capstone standard power running boards, let's take a look briefly at the interior. Now, like Mesa was saying on the front end, I'll remind you guys that this is part two. So this is kind of just a recap of the interior before we get to that test drive. Um, otherwise, if you want to know all the nitty gritty details, make sure you go to part one and learn all about this cabin and which trims get which features. Here is the smart key entry. Um, as you can see, typical Toyota key fob. It is standard on all the models. And let's uh, let Mason get inside the vehicle and we'll talk about the cabin materials. So as the capstone model, we have the nicest interior Sequoia has to offer. That means we've got leather across the upper dashboard. We've got the real open pore walnut wood trim up here. 
This does illuminate at night to say capstone. We have leather all through the center areas, more of the open pour wood that runs through the middle, and lots and lots of leather. And this is a pre-production model, but yet the quality in here is still top notch. Everything fits together really well and feels very solid. Let's go ahead and fire it up. So obviously technology back when Mason was in kindergarten and I was in the fourth grade was not fantastic. So with this next generation, we are taking a humongous step forward. So up in the front, we have a standard full digital gauge cluster on all versions of the Sequoia. Additionally, upper end models are going to include the head up display up there at the top, which has quite a lot of information. And then we also have our main display. So this is a humongous 14 inch high resolution display. Um, this is included on all but the base model as standard equipment and it's running Toyota's brand new infotainment system, which includes features such as the wireless Android Auto you see running right now, as well as wireless Apple CarPlay. And looking at the main system itself, it's very easy to navigate through the different settings because you just have some convenient quick shortcuts on the side. Everything is large and not confusing. And we also do have this rear camera mirror system additionally. Now in terms of the cabin itself, of course you have a lot of features on board. I won't go through every single feature, but you know some of your noteworthy ones include the fact that we have a standard 360 degree camera system. This takes up the entire 14 inch display, which I'm very happy to see. And you can change between a whole bunch of different views, including side views, guidelines, trailering, etc etc you also have an automated trailering system to help you back up a trailer when that is connected as a, as an option and then of course in terms of storage you have ample places that you can stick things we have small places right like right there you have this little area this scoots back you have your whole gigantic center console here which has plenty of space for coupons or whatever else you want to stick in there You've got your two cup holders. You have a large pad right here. And for most models, that is also going to include a wireless phone charging pad there for your phone to kind of stand upright. And that's in addition to the fact that you have storage in the doors and you also have storage even above that display up there. Now, in terms of other things to talk about, we do have a really nice audio system. This is the upgraded JBL sound system. Definitely sounds pretty nice. And then finally, at the front of the cabin, we do have a brand new and very large panoramic sunroof. Now let's go ahead and check out the back. Now taking a look in the rear areas, the same luxury does continue back here. You also have a ton of space. Uh, technically, this is down just a little bit from a Tahoe, but as you can see, what difference does it make? It's still absolutely enormous back here. We also have our own climate zone, three stage heated seats, and three stage seat ventilation for both the Platinum and the Capstone. Uh, that's something that Tahoe does not offer, for example. We have the captain's chair arrangement here, and we also have the sunshades. Now we'll get into the third row. So as you can see, that's how the seats kind of tumble out of the way. Ugh. And I'll squeeze back here and take a look at the third row. So the important things to know about the third row to, uh, that I'll recap with is the fact that this third row has class exclusive sliding ability. So we can actually slide this uh, forward and back six inches, depending on if you want more leg room here or if you want more cargo capacity in the back. And you can also recline this seat. So uh, if you press this button right here, we can power recline back and get a more comfortable angle. Um, it is obviously not humongous back here uh, compared to a Tahoe or an Expedition with an independent rear suspension. We're definitely lacking thigh support, so you're a little bit more crunched up. But in terms of the actual leg room, it's pretty much the same. Now, in terms of our cargo area, we do have the ability to independently open the glass. As you remember, the last generation had the power folding abilities or sliding, I should say. And then as we open up the actual hatchback here, we do have quite a bit of junk back here, but this is going to be 
your uh, standard version behind the third row. You're looking at low 20s cubic feet. Um, and then when you fold down all of the seats, the maximum is 87 cubic feet. So if you're kind of comparing, um, again, you're gonna notice the fact that we don't have the independent rear suspension. We also have the battery pack underneath of the third row. Both of those things will kind of impede on that um, and keep it from getting up to the level of some of the competition, such as the Tahoe, which is coming in in the 120s. But in order to make like a nice level floor, you do have the availability of this cargo shelf where you can go through these rungs and get whatever level that you need. But now let's go ahead and get to the part you're waiting for. We're heading out on the road. up a little bit of a hill so uh, with this Sequoia I think one of the biggest and most important things to note about it is the fact that you have the iForce Max powertrain the hybrid powertrain standard equipment yeah so unlike the Tundra where you have the look the uh, smaller naturally or 3.5 twin turbo without the uh, hybrid system this one is the best you can get and it's standard on all the trims including the SR5 base model so that's certainly a very nice thing to see and you get all of that power 437 horsepower 583 pound-feet of yeah. torque <laughs> yeah and if you're keeping tabs on that that is going to be more than even the upgraded engine in the Chevy Tahoe so that's going to have 420 and 460 the way more torque almost a, over 100 pound-feet more torque plus even more horsepower ever so slightly. So um, this is a really impressive powertrain to have standard equipment. Also, one thing that we've been talking about just on our brief little drive here, our, um, you know, we've been driving for about 20 minutes at this point, is that it has a nice burly tone to it. You know, you would think with a V6, it might not have as satisfying of a tone as a big burly V8, which is a lot of people what they want. Um, this actually has a nice tone to it as well. Yeah, I mean, so, there's... There's certainly sound enhancement going on, but it's like one of those things, I don't mind sound enhancement. You know, right. when you make things sound better for me, I appreciate that. And when you put your foot down, it sounds like a V8. Yeah. And I'm not mad about it. <laughs> this is really quick. <laughs> <laughs> it pulls so hard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sound level reader went flying. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to <laughs> tame it down there. <laughs> so the other nice thing about this uh, powertrain combination is certainly this 10-speed automatic transmission. When you put your foot down, shifts are lightning fast. It'll drop several gears at once. Um, you know, and otherwise when you're just driving around in a more casual manner, like most people will be doing, um, it's nice and smooth as well. Right. And you are going to have two wheel drive standard on every single trim level besides for the TRD Pro where it is standard equipment, um, and optional four wheel drive. It's an additional $3,000 to get four wheel drive on all of the trim levels that we're, we'll mention the pricing for in just a little bit. But guys, I won't keep you waiting longer. We need to talk about the ride quality for the Sequoia because that is really the point of a big three row like this is you need to haul around your family. You wanna go on family vacations and enjoy the ride experience. So let's go ahead and talk about that. And I'm very happy to tell you that this is awesome ride quality in the Sequoia. We've been nothing but impressed in our um, you know, drive so far this morning. This is a really good riding vehicle. First of all, the seats are really comfortable. Second of all, the suspension is tuned really nicely. Um, you have an adaptive variable suspension. You also have a rear air suspension. Um, so all of that put together really gives you one of the best ride qualities in the entire segment. I don't know if it's quite as good as a Chevy Tahoe full air suspension, but I think it's definitely up there with one of the best. Yeah, um, I think we were recently in an expedition and it seems like it rides better than that. 
for sure. Um, and then like Mason was saying, you know, this is kind of tucked maybe right underneath of that, um, you know, Chevy Tahoe with the magnetic ride control and the full air suspension. That's pretty much the best you can yeah. get. But this is pretty close. You know, the way it handles bumps, very impressive. You got a lot of different drive modes and we can kind of talk about that as we go through, but we've already cycled through a few of them. We're in comfort right now, or actually normal. This ride is super smooth and controlled on the highway. And then when you go into the sport mode, it's gonna firm things up for you nicely so that you have a little bit better handling and uh, more body control. Yeah. And I do also wanna talk about the sound um, entering into the cab and we have our handy dandy sound level meter here so we can compare to the Tahoe going 55. Looks like the road is pretty smooth here. Fifty-seven point nine is what we're sitting at for the sound level reader. That is a really good reading, guys. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the Tahoe tested at. You have to maybe go see that or watch our comparison video, <laughs> probably coming soon to the channel on this. But that's a really good reading, and a lot of that could be due to the fact that this capstone is going to be the quietest of the Sequoia range um, because they've added acoustic glass to really just make this experience more premium by giving you you know the best ride quality and also the quietest cabin <laughs> we're in texas there's not many corners so i took advantage of that one <laughs> and put it in sport plus mode um you know of course this is a humongous three row suv but you know it has pretty good body control when you put it into the sport plus mode also while i'm in sport plus mode um I'll slow down here, there's no one else around on this road, and we can uh, take off and see how the performance is from a, a dead stop here. The cows are gonna enjoy this show here. <laughs> <laughs> going to be today's slam dunk we're out here in texas but we got to bring our kentucky element in slam dunk is going to be that powertrain standard on every single trim level especially if you're looking at the lower end models i mean you are not going to get a 6.2 liter in a base tahoe it's just not going to happen standard so that's really a big benefit for this also it's just really an impressive powertrain Now, as far as our air ball is concerned, um, what we're gonna say is the third row. So, you know, you watch the review. The third row is a little bit of a disappointment over something like a Chevy Tahoe or an Expedition. It's just not gonna be as comfortable. Um, and that's gonna be one of the sacrifices that Toyota has made. So, um, just keep that in mind. But of course, having a hybrid powertrain means you're probably wondering about the fuel economy and how that's going to stack up. Well, I will say, at least at the time we're filming this, if it, if it changes before this video gets uploaded, we'll make sure that we you know, add this information in or add it to the, the video description. But at this current time, we cannot say exactly what fuel economy this has. It has not been rated by the EPA. That being said, you do have some reference point because the Tundra with this same powertrain um, you do kind of know how much fuel economy that gets, so yeah. you, you should be looking at roughly the same area as this. Yeah, 21 miles a gallon combined is what the capstone four-wheel drive is rated at. So, um, the Tundra, of course. So, you know, if you get similar fuel economy figures to that around 21, 22, hopefully, maybe, um, that's going to put this as one of the best in the segment. So, uh, we're having our fingers crossed that it's going to have pretty darn good fuel economy for the segment. Plus right. the additional power. Exactly. And if that shapes up, having maybe best in class fuel economy with some of the best standard power in the segment, yeah. that's going to be a real positive benefit for the Sequoia for sure. Yeah. Hey guys, so we just finished a little road trip in the Sequoia. It was about an hour drive, mostly highway driving, but we wanted to update you with the average fuel economy that we were getting mm -hmm. over that course of time. So if we turn our camera around here, we're looking at 24.8 
miles per gallon. Um, like I mentioned, that is mostly highway driving, but we wanted to provide you with the most accurate fuel economy figures that we could. So hopefully that's useful for you. Now, I also want to talk about the pricing information. We do have that with us today. Um, so the SR5 is going to start at 58500 It's worth noting that is a bit more expensive than the base um, Tahoe. However, you're going to be getting more standard equipment. Um, limited 64.7, Platinum 70900 TRD Pro 76900 capstone is going to be 75.3 keep in mind though that you do have to add in four-wheel drive on that so this one as equipped is coming in at 78.3 plus destination of 14.95 um, so you know we're looking at just about eighty thousand dollars for this fully loaded model of course eighty thousand dollars is pretty expensive that being said that's pretty much in line with what the competition uh, costs maybe even a little less than that um, but of course, you know, you're not going to have the same deal as the outgoing generation, right. which was significantly more affordable for good reason, but it was significantly more affordable. And I do want to mention, of course, being a hybrid model, um, <laughs> you do have the ability to drive around you know, with the engine off a decent amount. You know, we got very excited about the power, but you know, under 18 miles per hour, the engine can be off um, and let the electric motor do some stuff if you're just lightly driving around town or like a parking lot. Down a hill. Of course, um, as we talked about though, power really is kind of the primary focus of this system. So unlike a Prius or a RAV4 hybrid, the engine will run more than that because you need to get this big beast moving. But all in all, it is easy for us to say this is a fast improvement over the previous generation Sequoia and really just an impressive overall product. I love what Toyota has done here. Um, you know, we were very impressed by the Tundra and I just really appreciate taking all the strong elements of the Tundra and they've really brought them into the Sequoia um, with that power. You've got all the you know size and space of this thing, potentially excellent fuel economy. Um, it really does seem like this is going to be a three-row runner. What's going... <laughs> I cannot. I can't do it like that. What's going on, YouTube? So besides... <laughs> no, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have started me on that. That was actually a good one. That was your best one.